Hello everyone, in this video we're going to get started with the Smart Home Kit and the Microbit. So the first thing you need to do is open up a new project, you go into Advanced, um, you're going to scroll down to Extensions, and in the search box just simply type Smart Home. Hit Enter, it should come back as Electfreaks, and you can hit it and it'll install. And after you do that, um, our screen should refresh, here we go, and you'll see that we have a Smart Home menu, an OLED, and a NeoPixel menu. Okay, so that's great, so we're ready to go. So hopefully you've already watched the video on the flowchart to understanding what we're going to be trying to do with this circuit um, and with the micro bit. Um, as a quick review, we're trying to create a light sensor that is sound activated. And when the lights are off and the sound is heard, we can turn the light on. So the first thing we need to do is enable our onboard LEDs, this, this five by five grid of red LEDs on the micro bit, because we want to actually control the RGB light we're going to attach, the NeoPixel light. So we can do this two ways. Um, LED enable is under the LED command block. You'll notice it's not here, but we can click on the more and we'll find it right here, LED enable false. Or we can simply type it in, right into the search bar and go LED enable, hit enter, and you can see it searches any relevant entries or blocks that we can use. So we're gonna grab that and put it into our start block. Next, we have to initialize or set our light on our system. So that was our disable block. So we're telling the LED enable to be false. We're turning off the grid of lights on front of the micro bit. Next, we need to turn on the NeoPixel light. And that is called a strip. Even though it's just a single light, it's considered a strip because these lights are really good to be linked in long strips. Um, so we're gonna go under NeoPixel and you'll see it's the first one that says set strip to, and then it has a blue circle oval in it of a NeoPixel. We're just gonna drag that one out. So that very first entry, we're gonna put it under LED enable false. And we're just going to leave it as the name strip and we're going to set it to pin one. And it's a single LED. So we're just going to change that 24 to one and we'll leave it in the RGB format. That'll make our life a little easier. And you'll see that we got this little NeoPixel added to the bottom of our simulator. Next, we're going to go into the forever loop. And when we did the flow chart, we talked about probing the environment and checking the light. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create a variable to hold hold our variable data of light sensed in the room. And I'm just gonna call that light, nice and simple. So I'm gonna go variables, make a variable, type in light and hit okay. Then what I wanna do is set light to a value. So I'm gonna drag this out. I'm gonna put it in the forever block. We're gonna constantly ask this question and I need to probe the sensor that's included in our smart home kit. So I'm gonna come down here to smart home and I'm gonna grab the value of light intensity from zero to 100. I'm going to drag that out, and you can see I can link it up. Okay, they highlight yellow, and they have a little attachment link, so I'm going to let go, and there it goes. pops right in. Our circuit has this light sensor attached to pin 3, so I'm going to change pin 1 to pin 3 here at the end. Now, that was the first part. We're going to make a variable called light, and we're going to probe our light intensity in the room, and whatever value comes back, we're going to store it in light so that we can use it in our question coming up. And at that point, we asked a question logic question. So we go into logic, we grab if, and we drag that out, oops, and attach that. And we're going to query something if it's equal, okay, if two values are equal or greater than or less than. And in this type, this chance, or sorry, in this example, um, we're going to go into our logic once more. And we're going to scroll down to these comparison blocks, we're going to drag out this middle one, and stuff it in that little hole. And you'll notice that says if zero is less than zero, that doesn't make a lot of sense for us right now. We want to query our light. So let's go into variables, grab the light variable. You'll see it's an oval. That means it can fit into this oval right here. Okay. And we're going to ask the light if it's less than the value of 50. Remember we talked about 50 decibels sort of being our cutoff. Okay, so if the value of light is less than 50, that means we're in the dark. Well, we need to check our noise sensor. We're going to need another variable just similar to what we did with lights. So let's go variables, make a variable, and click on, or sorry, and type in sound, okay? Some noise or some sound, something to track sound. And we're gonna grab the set sound to zero and drag that in. And similar to how light, the variable we have made, is set to the value of our sensor, we're gonna do the same thing with our microphone. So we're gonna go into Smart Home. We're gonna get the value of noise in decibels at, at a pin. We're gonna drag that into our sound, okay, our sound variable. And um, I'm trying to remember, we set this to pin two. Okay, so that's where we wired in our microphone. And we're gonna, we're gonna set the sound values pin, or sorry, the sound sensor's value 
to the sound variable. And we're going to ask a second question, because remember, we had two questions nested within each other here. So we go back into logic, we grab another if, and we drag it out, and we plug it in. And this time we're going to query, is the sound greater or less than a value? So we're going to come back in here to logic. We're going to grab a comparison block and drag it in. We're going to set the first one to sound. And we're going to ask, is the sound greater than 70 decibels? So how this code is going to work, it's going to say, okay, are the lights off? Yes. Well, then let's check the sound. Is there sound being produced in the room? Yes. Well, let's do something. And in this case, we want to turn our light on. So we're going to go back into NeoPixel because that's where we had our light box. And we are going to grab the strip show color block. Okay, so it's the fourth one down. Our light strip is just called strip. And we're going to show the color white, nice and bright. We'll light up our, our closet. And we're going to pause. Okay, we're going to give it some time to actually light up and sort of illuminate our closet. And we'll set that to, let's say, uh, 10,000 milliseconds. Okay, so that'd be 10 seconds that the light will stay on. And then what we want to do is turn off our light. So we're just going to duplicate this show color block. Right click on it, duplicate. We're going to drag it underneath pause. And we're going to say show the color black. Our LED is an RGB type LED. LED and it cannot produce the color black. And in, in fact, when we say show the color black, we're telling the, the device to turn itself off, okay? So it won't emit any light. And that's all to this little program, okay? So I'll zoom back in a little bit so we can see the whole thing. So quick recap on start, we're gonna turn our five by five LED off. That's this one here. We're gonna set our strip, um, our light, our single LED light to be a NeoPixel at pin one with one LED in the RGB format. And then we're gonna go down to our forever loop we're going to set our light variable to the intensity of the light sensor. And then if that light sensor comes back with a value less than 50, which means it's dark, then we're going to check our sound sensor. And we're going to set our sound variable to the variable or the value, sorry, of the microphone. And if the microphone comes back with a sound that's greater than 70 decibels, so someone has clapped their hands or said lights on, then we're going to turn our light on to color white. We're going to wait 10 seconds, and then we're going to turn the light off. And then the loop will come back to the start and ask these questions again. If the light is ever on in the room, this conditional, this first question here will come back as false and all of this code in the middle will never run. Okay, so it's a good way to debug our code. You can cover up the light sensor to make it dark and you can keep your hand off the light sensor to simulate daylight, especially if you're underneath a lamp in the room. Go ahead, test out the code, try it out. This is your first circuit, your first programming in grade eight. Um, you've already watched the flow chart to understand sort of the concept of what we're doing here. I think that's long enough for this video. Call me over if you get stuck um, and uh, happy coding. Can't wait to see what you guys build with all these cool gadgets.